Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the information certification exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group, and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of process, content, and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is text analytics, a key part of the special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association, helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module is part of the Access and Use Knowledge domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll explore the fundamentals of text analytics, including text analytics, content analytics, content aggregation, content entity extraction, and content curation. We've got a lot to cover, so let's begin. Also known as text mining, text analytics combines a number of kinds of artificial intelligence to infer meaning from bodies of textual content. These include semantic analysis, linguistics, entity extraction, tagging, pattern recognition, and lexical analysis and functionality ranges from auto-classification to clustering content around specific business targets and determining whether that content has to do with that business focus. Text analytics is a major driver of modern business intelligence because it applies the traditional focus on data to the world of unstructured content. But remember that before this can happen, you have to organize and manage your content so it can be more efficiently and accurately found. A major piece of information organization centers on developing ontologies, which basically apply rules that specify terms, what they mean, and what the relationships are between and among them. As such, they represent domains of knowledge rather than ways to structure a vocabulary, the way their taxonomy cousins do. For example, an ontology for salad would specifically contain the structure for how it relates to all its parts from the ingredients to the growers to maybe even the rodents that might eat its components in the field, and how a salad is different in Japan than it is in Italy. So as you can see, an ontology about a particular topic should enable you to derive all the knowledge that exists about that particular topic. Now, not surprisingly, given the enormous influence of the Internet on information management, the ontology concept has been formally extended to the web in the form of the W3C's Web Ontology Language, known informally as OWL2, O-W-L. The W3C, of course, is the World Wide Web Consortium, an international community dedicated to developing web standards. OWL2 is one of these, and it's designed to facilitate ontology development and sharing via the web, with the ultimate goal being to make web content more accessible to machines. This slide shows the structure of OWL2 and comes from the W3C website on the subject. Here's an example from the company Clear Forest. Here, the tool's gone through a body of documents and extracted entities that it's discovered this content is about. Along the left-hand side, you can see such items as city, company, country, and industry term. These are words that exist and occur a lot in the documents the tool is looking at and it's able to start extracting relationships between and among these entities. Looking at the document on the right, you can see that it presents a color correlation as well. Company and Microsoft and Google are the same color because the tool has determined that Microsoft and Google are companies. Similarly, New Zealand and U.S. are colored yellow because they have been found to be countries. Now, the more documents the tool goes through, and the more correlations it makes, the better it will be able to make these kinds of associations on a number of different levels and with a high degree of confidence. This is what text analytics is all about. Not only pulling out key terms, but building relationships between them, producing better indexes, and ultimately building better classifications that in turn will result in more effective search and intelligence gathering. Now, I mentioned the word clustering a moment ago, and here's an example to give you a sense of what that means. Clustering is the grouping of entities and relationships. 
This example is from the Research Institute for Mathematics and Computer Science in the Netherlands, which used a tool from Insight to prepare it. Here we have a portion, surrounded by clusters that encompass things about or related to portion. Not only things specific to the car, like the company that makes it, but also parts and accessories, and related events and clubs, and the latest news about both the company and the car, plus some websites about them both. There's even a cluster around motorsports in general, for people who might be looking at information about Porsches, but are more in tune with something that's a bit more general. So as you can see, the person searching this particular repository would be able to discover not only a lot of information specifically about Porsches, but a lot of related information as well that improves the whole discoverability process around the topic. And that's exactly what this tool is all about. Content Analytics takes this same principle and broadens it to cover not just text documents, but rich media files and other unstructured content as well. Supporting trend analysis, content assessment, pattern recognition, and exception detection, content analytics tools provide business intelligence and strategic value across unstructured data at similar levels to those conventionally associated with structured data reporting. Content analytics can be put to many uses besides its regular BI context, including fraud detection, asset protection, healthcare research, market monitoring, and perhaps the most famous of all, the powering of the Watson computer from IBM that was declared champion on an episode of the TV quiz show Jeopardy. Analyzing the content presented in the questions allowed Watson to return high probability answers, phrased in the form of a question, of course, at a rate that secured it the victory. In the same way content analytics takes text analytics to another level, so does content aggregation do the same with data aggregation. The idea involves collecting content from internal and external resources, but instead of just data, it encompasses information of all sorts. The offering from paper.li, as shown here, is one example of content aggregation at work. Taking its instructions from the user who sets it up, this offering presents its search results in the form of an online newspaper, with links to the blogs, tweets, news feeds, and other content types that relate to the topic. Continuing to peel back the layers, we next find content entity extraction, which is the process of automatically pulling metadata out of unstructured documents so aggregation and other analytics techniques can be applied. Examples include person names, locations, dates, and any terms specific to the content. This can get fairly sophisticated and fairly well automated. For instance, a person entity extractor might know about the first name aliases, so it could know that Bob is the same thing as Robert, and could check the staff directory and fill the correct full name into the person attribute. In the same way, a date extractor might know about many different date formats, and a product name extractor might be able to associate names with a product database and then insert the correct ID. Having all this happen in the background can take much of the burden off of human operators and can greatly speed the process along. However, prudence dictates that human beings do get involved at some point for quality control purposes and, of course, for exception handling. Under the covers, most systems employ what's known as Named Entity Recognition, or NER, which takes the form of translating an unannotated block of text, such as this one on the screen, Jim bought 300 shares of Acme Corp in 2006, into an annotated block of text like the one shown on the screen. In this example, the annotations have been done using so-called NMX tags that were developed for the Message Understanding Conference in the 1990s. NER systems have been created that use grammar-based techniques as well as statistical models. While the former typically obtain better precision, they involve months of work by experienced computational linguists. The latter, on the other hand, typically require a large amount of manual annotation to train them, but once they're trained, they can perform at levels within shouting distance of what human beings can achieve, having been measured at roughly 93% accuracy versus 97 so there are trade-offs to be had either way. With the content now tagged, comparisons and aggregations can be performed 
and associations then codified to boost search and business intelligence outcomes, tasks that, that are coming to be known generally as content curation. Rohit Bhargava is Senior Vice President of Global Strategy and Marketing for Ogilvy and an adjunct professor for global marketing at Georgetown University. Author of a 2009 blog post called Manifesto for the Content Curator, he predicted that this role would be one of the fastest growing and most important jobs of the future, and he defined it as one who finds, groups, organizes, or shares the best and most relevant content on a specific issue. What it does not do, he wrote more recently, is add more content or noise to what he calls the chaotic information overload of social media. Instead, he writes, it focuses on helping any one of us to make sense of this information by bringing together what is most important. And that's about the best explanation of the purpose of text and content analytics I've ever heard. This module has explored the fundamentals of text analytics, including text analytics themselves, content analytics, content aggregation, content entity extraction, and content curation. Having completed it, you may next wish to review the series on Capture and Manage. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the Information Certification Exam. This proctored test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.